Firepower Threat Defense 622. We're gonna use Firepower Device Manager and set up Remote Access VPN with AD and just the default certificate. So first thing is we gotta enable uh, the licensing um, through Smart Account. So just we'll come in here and enable and we'll pick APIC and Plus in my case. Now that we have it enabled, we can build the configuration. So I've already built out the Active Directory portion. So I'll show you real quick. You can do it here as well, but since I already created it, it it's already available. So we'll give the connection profile a name. We'll select the Active Directory um, source that we're gonna use. And I'll show you that in a second, like I said. And you'll see the little eye throughout that you can use to get some insight into what you're actually doing if you're not sure or some specifics around it. Now you can upload the packages. So when the user connects through a, a web page, that the uh, any Connect client will get deployed to the end user. So I've got Mac and Windows here in the example. So we go ahead and pick the device identity, the outside interface, the FQDN. And then we'll um, select a pool here. Now, when you build this object, all you do is grab the network um, where you want the IP addresses to come from and it'll start handing them out. Um, so you don't have to do what you normally do when you create a pool, uh, you know, the, the beginning and end, you just have to pick the network here. Slash 24, all right. So now we'll select that object. We'll add the DNS information here. The suffix itself, we can give a banner page. Um, and then from uh, here, we've got a couple of options below. Um, we could do a split tunneling, for example, um, or uh, NAT exempt. So I'm not doing split tunneling in this case, but NAT exempt, uh, it is enabled because um, it is something that we need to do because we are NATing the inside to the outside host. We don't want this to be NATed from the inside to the VPN client. We'll select that inside interface. The inside network. Okay, and we have the client profile here if we wanted to add it. So here's a summary of uh, everything that we've done. So it gives you a good indication of, of what all the settings were that you selected throughout the um, wizard. Um, so, you know, the, the packages, the Active Directory, the certificate, the outside interface, banner, etc. So you can see them all here. So if I jump back down to objects identity, I just wanted to show you the configuration portion of this. So, um, and there's one thing to note here as well, um, and that's got to do with um, how you connect to Active Directory um, and what interface. So if you have a management uh, interface, you're gonna get this error if you haven't given an IP address to the diagnostic interface that's the same as the IP, same range or subnet as the IP um, address of the management interface. So you can see here, there's the IP I've highlighted. Now we'll go into diagnostics and we'll give it an IP address. Now, it, again, it depends on how you have it configured. Um, if you go to um, help, which I'll show you here, it'll break down if you're using a data interface as management versus the management interface, uh, obviously as management and the steps that you need to take in order to make this uh, work. Um, so once we have the IP address here, um, we can very quickly go to the help and we can see here that it, it clearly states what's required when using the management interface um, in order to connect. So um, again, just reference the, the document itself, uh, the online help, and it'll, it'll walk you through if you're unsure. Um, now that we have that configured, I'm going to jump, before we go back and test it, I'm just going to come back and jump. We're going to need a uh, policy from the outside uh, using the VPN uh, addresses, right? So uh, the outside zone, and then we're going to grab the remote access VPN object, network object, 
coming to the inside interface to the inside uh, VLAN um, object, right? In, in our case, it's a, a, a slash 24 network internally. Um, so once we have that, we can deploy it. If you didn't add this, once you have a, a policy, for example, um, outside to in, um, you're gonna have to have this exception here, right? Or else they're not, they're gonna be able to connect, get that VPN tunnel up, um, but they're not gonna be able to actually access any resources. Now that we come back to the object uh, around the, um, the realm itself, now we can do a quick test and this will go fairly quick here. Um, and you can see that uh, it's successful. So that's it, policy pushed, right? We can come back again, look at the summary. I've already showed you that earlier um, in regards to our configuration, but we can also look at instructions. So this is nice if you wanna copy and paste to help uh, tell your users what they need to do to get the client on the machine. Um, so basically you're gonna to connect to a URL. Um, obviously it would be a friendly name that you would use. A, uh, they would connect and then uh, they would log in like they would normally with their Active Directory credential. And then based on policy, we're gonna push the uh, proper configuration down to them and, and have the AnyConnect client. So let's, let's have a look at that as a user. So here we're gonna go to the site. And again, I'm using, um, you know, self-signed certificate and I, I did not create a, uh, a DNS record for it. So you, you can see I get, I get the uh, self-signed uh, warning or, or the certificate warning, um, but that's fine. Um, here, I just wanna show there's no Cisco, don't know any connect client currently on the machine. It's a vanilla machine. Um, user logs in, in this case is sales one. We see the banner page here, we just hit continue. Um, and then it's gonna go through the process. It'll prompt the user if something comes uh, up that uh, um, the user needs to be aware of. We give them complete uh, understanding of what they need to do in order uh, if they have to take a manual step. That uh, certificate warning you would normally would not get um, because you would have it uh, in the Trusted Roots uh, store um, and it would be a validated certificate. So you would not normally get that message. So now the client is being pushed. And the nice thing about this too is once the client is pushed, it's gonna automatically reconnect the tunnel um, using the, um, the uh, AnyConnect agent itself. Likewise, when they connect in the future, you can do things like update the AnyConnect client automatically. You can also push out things like uh, our endpoint module uh, for AMP, as well as our umbrella module for uh, Cisco Umbrella, formerly OpenDNS. Um, so there's a couple of other things that you can do once you have the AnyConnect agent uh, deployed. depending on whether you're using the OnBox Manager versus Firepower Management Center, et cetera. So um, you can see that we're connected, uh, some specifics around um, the connection itself. Um, so all that's here. If you know Most users aren't gonna even look at this. We do have a diagnostic tool too that could also be pushed, for example, um, depending on the deployment. And that way the user can run a diagnostics on the machine and send you a, a packaged uh, file uh, with all the uh, logs and information that's required, say for TAC, for example. Here, I'm just gonna make sure the tunnel is up. I'm gonna uh, ping an inside host and, and make sure it resolves uh, or returns a response, sorry. And, and you can see it did so. Here we'll do uh, show VPN session DB, any connect. And now we can see you know a little bit about the username um, you know, the, the IP addresses, both internal uh, as well as uh, external, um, the encryption, et cetera. So, uh, you know, very quickly you can come up and, and, and jump on the CLI and get some good uh, information in regards to what's taking place. And there's, you know, the other things that are uh, available to you as far as troubleshooting. And that's it.